Um, so today I'd like to share with you guys some of the research results uh, for one of the digital car key system. <coughs> uh, yeah, so. Hey. Okay, I, will just, I have to go just this way. And okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> who am I? Uh, my name is Kevin. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, it's so welcome. Um, I'm a security researcher from uh, InGeek Security Com Consultant. Uh, we are based in Shanghai, and we dedicate to automotive security research. And my particular area is focused on wireless and embedded systems. Yeah, so. <clears throat> and today's agenda is going to be like this. First, I'm going to do a very quick introduction um, about Key Fob 101. And then I will walk through the structure and the functionality of our target today. It's called Ami Key. Um, Ami Key is also called, uh, AKA uh, Digital Car Keys. Um, <clears throat> And then I will do uh, some analytics um, and introduce uh, attack vectors on this uh, AmiKey system. So basically, I will start from physical layer, and, and, when, and then we take a look a little bit about uh, RF, RF layer, and we take a look at application. Eventually, we let's see how can we uh, do some uh, Bluetooth sniffing and decrypt the packet. Okay. <clears throat> so introduction. Um, I think the uh, car key fob is one of the most common items uh, we can find in our pocket, right? So um, in a very big early age, uh, the car keys only re really just rely on the mechanic key, and then they implement some uh, kind of a remote key entry. Uh, <coughs> so it actually start with some kind of uh, infrared, and, and then move on to RF fixed code, and then the rolling code. And in order to pivot, uh, to do some uh, uh, authentication, they also uh, implement uh, uh, some co something called a uh, RFID. They put a RFID chip inside your uh, car keys, and <clears throat> and and then uh, there's a new camera, a new game changer coming. So basically, uh, those manufacturers start to. Uh, implement some kind of some car key access system that really just rely on uh, mobile phones, right? So, um, yeah, this is going to be a new trend. Um, for example, if you're buying a, a, a new Tesla Model 3, uh, you won't have any f actual physical key anymore. They going to provide you uh, a RFID tag. And also, really, you just uh, you're going to download the application from them, and you can lock, unlock, or start engine from the uh, uh, from your mobile phones. Fuck, sorry, <laughs> that was my that was not my laptop, so I don't know why. Uh, yeah. So um, now Tesla is not the only uh, people, uh, only manufacturer doing that. So actually, it's everybody uh, doing this uh, for the future cars. So like Volvo. Um, like pen, shitty pen, pens. They, they're also doing this kind of thing, right? So that's going to be a new trend. And now, in the what, what has been done in in so far? Um, for the for the past few years, we have looked uh, m many different uh, case studies on on a, to dedicate to the car car uh, key fob studies. Um, so in here, I list some of them as an uh, example. Uh, in, like for, um, for example, in the early age 2008, the rolling code algorithm called Keylog has been cracked. And also, there's a uh, transparent uh, algorithm, HITAC2, also been cracked. And also, Sammy, he's our hero, as always. And he he uh, presents a talk uh, in DEF CON a few years ago. Uh, it's basically, he found a, a trick that called rolling jump that basically you can use in that um, to kind of bypass the uh, rolling codes uh, mechanism. Now, listen, uh, in 2015, there's uh, some, some new attack vector uh, came out. 
uh, I, I'm going to introduce a little bit more on these two details. <coughs> so uh, basically, a researcher from German, Germany, they, they, he found a way to hack your uh, BMW through a cellular network. And then there's a, a, in England, there's a research co uh, the company from, from Pentas Partners, they, they are a uh, research and find out how can they hack the Wi-Fi access point through your Mitsubishi Outlanders. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, those other uh, attack vectors not just only focus on your key fob anymore. So it, it actually involves even more attack vectors. Um, so, yeah, here's the details regarding the uh, uh, BMW Connect Drive. So basically, this German uh, researcher, he able to set up a fake base station. So it's like similar uh, cell, cell network. Now, the really the vulnerable uh, design here is BMW is really rely on the HTTP get, uh, HTTP to communicate back to the backend server. So he able to uh, decrypt, <coughs> reverse engineer and decrypt the uh, tra traffic and set up the base, fake base station um, in order to unlock the, the BMW Connect drive, right? So, and then here's another case study. Uh, in 2016, the uh, uh, pen test partner, the researcher, they able to crack the Wi-Fi access point provided by your outland cars and once they uh, connect to your car and re re reverse engineer protocols, now um, they able to dis uh, do a lot of cool things like uh, air turn off your uh, air condition, heating, and the alarms. Right, that's the scary part. So, uh, I I would say uh, the new trend coming. There's always going to be uh, some new new hacks. Right, so <clears throat> now let's take a look at our main target today. It's called AMI key. Uh, yeah, the AMI key, aka digital car keys, is uh, invested by a company called Xiaomi uh, from China. Uh, basically, this device here is what it does is uh, it enables some of the old car module uh, mo model uh, become like uh, smart cars. So basically, you can use in this device. You connect to your car, and you can lock, unlock, and start an engine through mobile phones, right? Um, yeah, here's some of the highlights for the features. So yeah, so it, this device is really rely on uh, Bluetooth low, en low energy, and they can, as I said, they can lock and unlock your cars. And the, the one of the uh, interesting feature I found regarding to any other smart locks is the key sharing features. And this is really, uh, uh, advantage, I think, uh, distinguishing the uh, old type of uh, uh, car key hub systems is sharing. You can share to uh, different users, your friends, even you are in different countries, right? So you take look the uh, picture uh, uh, down, down below. That's how you connect your uh, AMI key to your cars. So you, you, you have to put uh, left your AMI key always left inside uh, your cars, right? And once uh, you want, when you come to the car, you want to open it, you just uh, pairing with the uh, AMI key with your Bluetooth. And then you send an unlocking command. Uh, AMI key will send another uh, RF signal to, in order to unlock the car. Right. So the components uh, of AMI key is like this. As you can see, it's quite simple. Um, it's only really just in. Uh, a uh, few items here is uh, one of the blank key, um, and then there's mean. Uh, you see the uh, <coughs> the little uh, thing in the middle is that that's the main board of the AMI key, and then there's another square one is called a uh, AMI key sensor. So it's very simple uh, components, right? It's not um, So here's the uh, how how you going to do how the uh, AMI key really works is first you need to downloading. Uh, some application from AMI key, and you do the uh, uh, normal process. Uh, sorry, <laughs> um, you do a normal process like uh, you you 
uh, duplicate uh, your original key, mechan mechanic keys, and you scan the barcode on your army key in order to uh, get the uh, activation code. Then once you put an activation code uh, into the application, then you, you are binding your application with this uh, army key. And then, and then you can log in to the army key through Bluetooth, and from there you can lock and unlock. S send it lock and lock command to the army key. And just like any other uh, key uh, duplicating process, the, the, the very last uh, stage is you need to register your army key to the car. It's just like you, if you lost your original car key, you go to uh, the deal car dealer, you do the same thing. You need to register your new, your new key to your cars, right? So, um, as uh, army key claimed, they, they are supporting quite a lot uh, different brand of the car models. Now remember, those car models are not a very high-end uh, recent car models. It, it's quite a, uh, they, they're uh, targeting the market is like uh, old cars, uh, old model of cars, right? Because those cars usually don't have a lot of fancy features. But if, what happens if you want to have some uh, nice feature, and you, you probably can buy some uh, Ami key, right? So that's a, how, I think that's a how the how uh, marketing strategy is. So yeah, as you can see, um, uh, they uh, supporting like like a, like a, but the last uh, model is uh, is very common like a Volkswagen, Hyundai, uh, yeah, Ford, right? So now, uh, yeah, let's take a look inside, right? Um, from hacker perspective, we really want uh, we don't care how many models they are really support. We we really care is how they does work. Right, so um, I think the very first stage when you uh, this is not just apply to Army key, but I think it's a reply to any other uh, embedded systems. The first thing when you get your target, you want to take uh, get as much information as possible. And now, sometimes when you get some uh, some black box of uh, your target, you have no idea at all about your target. So. Uh, if you, I think the best practice is if you are able to access some kind of X-ray machine, you take you take a picture to look look inside. Now, what, the reason why we're doing that is to to see if your target has an uh, implement some kind of uh, uh, protection mechanism inside, right? Uh, sometimes you if you 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 if you they, they do you when you open a case you will may damage, right? So yeah, we we take a look. Uh, through X-ray machine, and we have found there's actually there's just only two screws. Uh, we don't they don't uh, implement any actual protection mechanism. But still, this is a, a, a best uh, good practice, right? It, it's, it's not necessary, but yeah, good to have. Um, yeah, so we can go ahead and open it up. And this uh, the Amiki system is structure is very simple. They only have two boards inside. As you can see, the yellow board, the yellow one. Um, and there is a green one, and the, the picture in uh, in the middle is actually uh, the back side of the green board. As uh, it's can this one is is just connected to to back to the yellow board, uh, yellow board. Yeah. So, um, okay. right. So, uh, so when we open up the. The, the the army keys, we want we want to see some details, right? The deep details. So, um, I think people have more familiar with uh, uh, reverse engineering, lots of hardware or embedded systems. We know the first uh, the first thing we are going to looking for is the the uh, chip model. So from there, um, we can uh, some, find some more details, right? So for army key, they nicely labeled uh, the. the the chip model is a CC2640, and when we Google it, we find out this is actually a Bluetooth module, right? So, and then we Google another green board, it's actually called NSP61X0915, and this is an RF module, so basically we can use it now to, uh, on, it's actual, uh, just like your, your actual uh, RF car keys. Now, uh, the, there's one, one thing different here is, 
this RF, RF module is really very different different car models, right? So, uh, not again. Sorry, it's really parasite. Um, yeah, and um, also, if you have ever uh, done some RF uh, hacking, you will know the first thing we always going to look is something called a FCC ID. But since this is this army key is really dedicated to the Chinese market, they they have similar system. It's called a C. CM, CMIT ID, but it's, it's just equivalent to FCC ID. So we type into the database, we can find more details regarding this devi uh, chip, uh, device, chip, chip, yeah, sorry. Um, now, there are one thing interesting, though. Uh, you remember uh, there's a uh, little square uh, device beside the AmiKey um, mainboard. It's called it's, it's sensor, and then when I open it, uh, we, we find out the chip type is SYD8801. Now, uh, I don't know why they, um, I mean, I mean, he does this. The functionality of this uh, sensor is unknown, right? Um, I take the, I go through the menus, I go through the applications, I go through their web, official website. They have not, not any detail mentioned. What do we do with this one? And we can, uh, we can get uh, I mean, key to work even without this one. So it's really strange they have this device here. So maybe they they, they just implement this uh, for a future rough, uh, for future use. So they send you in advance, right? So they don't need to send you again. Um, so I open it up. And I it's really just a Bluetooth mod, uh, another Bluetooth module. So I connect into it um, to to try to get some bit more details. And I was, as we can see, this is something called uh, Ami key smart key sensors. And there's some interesting uh, UID here. Um, so since we, we cannot find more uh, uh, details, uh, so why not we just go deeper? So I take a look at the data sheet of this particular chip, and I connect into, I try to connect. Uh, since the, from the data sheet, we find out it's actually supporting uh, uh, UART, SPI, uh, those, all those uh, common protocols. So I connect into it and try to find if there's a, a hint uh, this may what, what it may does. May, may do, um, but um, I can't kind of find any, any much useful information here. But since this device is not really uh, 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 f useful when, when for for hacking the actual uh, army keys, so I just leave there for the moment. Maybe in the future, if they actually implement and they they update some information, we can always go back to take a look at. It. So, uh, so now we actually um, spend. We, we actually spend most time on, on the main board of the army key. So we take a look first the RF module. Um, in the back side of the R, uh, uh, RF green board, that's the oscillator there. So they have nicely labeled uh, the value on it. So we can simply do some simple math to calculating uh, to find out the. Uh, uh, that seems like a, freak, a potential frequency range and a bit rate, something like that, right? But we need to verify it, right? So I this is a very simple setup like this. We're using a, a SDR device and we we connect to a, a antenna and then we just simply press the uh, lock or unlock buttons, try to uh, receive some signals, see if the calculation is correct. So um, I use in SDR hack RF here, but really you, it doesn't really need just hack RF. You can use Bray RF or use RP whatever you want. Um, that, that, yeah. So as you can see, when I press the button, um, the, yeah, the, the layers of peaks come up. Um, it's definitely, it, it, it is the 433.9 uh, 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 megahertz range, right? So the congregation is correct. Now, we also take a look at some RF, uh, a bit, uh, Bluetooth module. Um, because the, the Bluetooth module is actually we spend uh, the most of time on to in order to hack the uh, Rami key. So we what we can do the first one we try to connecting your uh, Bluetooth module is to do some rec recon operation, right? So we can using uh, uh, application uh, like a light blue or uh, not have connect. Um, yeah, really here just try to find as much as information possible. So. First, we can see the actually always broadcast the uh, uh, Bluetooth MAC address. 
Um, so that means we potentially we, we may able to track you. And also the other key information details here is those that are UUIDs, right? And if you ever have done uh, Bluetooth hacking, then you will know those uh, UUID is really uh, uh, the key, key things to for, for you, right? Now we the oh come on. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the light blue or uh, NF connects is not the only thing that application you can use to talk to your Bluetooth devices. Um, if you, we want to more interactive, uh, we can always use the, uh, uh, the application get to to interactive with your, your, your target. So here I list uh, of the, the mo all, all of the UUID here from the admin key. Right. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Okay. So and also, if we want to see more details, we also can um, now a uh, nice feature from the Android f uh, four point four above. In the developer mode, there's a, a function you can enable the uh, uh, Bluetooth stamp. So basically, that you can see all the traffic, uh, uh, interactive traffic. Uh, from uh, from the log file, and we can uh, reloading this log file into a Wireshark, and to un and and then we can uh, we know all the details, every steps f uh, between you mobile phone and your target army key, right? So here, like uh, we can see some uh, read response regarding uh, army key's battery information. So this is the actual app. Uh, uh, I know it's in Chinese, but uh, I'm going to translate it to English. Right? It's, it's, it's actually the layout is quite simple. Um, so first, you there's a connection. You press the button to connect into your AMI key, and then once you connect, there's a, a, a only few functions here. So basically, it's a unlock your car and you lock it, or you open your trunk back door, something like that. It's very simple. And then, as I mentioned, the, the nice feature share is a key sharing. You can share it with your friend. Uh, your wife, your, your other guys, and yeah, so. But we want to see more, right? Um, turns out, um, a key application, just like everybody else, right? They never bother to hardening your actual code, APK files. So we can easily to, to see the, the Java bytecode. Now, from Java bytecode, it's almost like we are reading the source code. Or so, for example, this uh, class here is really just uh, algorithm how to how they generating uh, the UUID. So, so basically, we we actually spend uh, uh, some time here to just read through the code to understand how uh, Amiki works, right? Uh, how they how how they how functional. Um, yeah. Now, here's got something interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you are able to read the Chinese, then you see that the comment is very funny, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, it turns, uh, it's, uh, I think it's just maybe developer at that time is not very in a good mood. He actually put comments like, what the hell in that com code? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and now, other than that, um, there's some uh, interesting information like uh, this uh, uh, URL here. Now, he actually, when I try to access this URL, it actually turns out they, they have mentioned that uh, it's a company internal login system. If you're not an employee, please go away. So I don't know why if they don't want people to access it, why well, not just don't bother to put there, right? So, okay. Um, here, did you spot something interesting? Uh, yeah. Like, Usually, when I start to uh, try to reverse engineer some applications, I will expect to see uh, the first thing I actually expect to see uh, if there has if they has enabled uh, sub search pending or not. But turns out it's not that's not necessary at all. They are completely rely on HTTP, right? Um, so from there, since we we all know that HTTP is not insecure, all the information is in plain text. So they're leaking a lot of privacy information here. So, for example, uh, this one here, you probably cannot see, but it's actually your IMEI uh, number of your mobile phones, 
right? So if people are able to sniff in with uh, your traffic, then yeah. And here's some more. Now, when we register with, uh, usually when we register a new user, they, they have some kind of protection called security questions in order to recover your keys in the future if you lost it. So again, it's in HTTP. So those, uh, you, you have all the, uh, if you sniff in it, uh, you are able to find all the answer to those security questions, right? So you may uh, just impersonate uh, this guy, uh, the owner in the future because you already know that how to recover it. Yeah, so si simple summary here is uh, the AMI key application com communicate with the backend service really just rely on HTTPs. So yeah, no privacy here at all. But uh, there's more. So I'm gonna introduce more on, on this one later on. So we, we'll see how this HTTP can lead in, uh, us to compromise your systems, right? But encryptions. There must be some kind of questions, right? Because every 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 manufacturer vendor they will always claim their uh, uh, product is the most secure one in the world. So actually, in in the menu, there's one uh, like Q and A kind of thing. They they mention their product is rely on uh, Bluetooth point four point zero, and they have in uh, uh, create created their own uh, proprietary encryptions, unique, right? Very secure. So. Really, they, they really think they are super secure. So they put, uh, this is a picture I took from their official website. They put all the uh, uh, fancy uh, crypto words on there. So you may think, wow, they really, this is really scary. This is super secure, right? Wow, okay, let's find out. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, fir the first thing uh, 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 we we can do is try to do some do some physical access, right? Okay. Uh, not again. Okay. So here's the thing. We can oh, we, we can always do some old school way, right? Now remember, the AMI key by request has to be always left in the car. So maybe those uh, theft. Or what you usually do, they can break in your uh, glass, right? They, they get it. They get your key. Your, your key is inside. Now, however, you cannot, because you cannot uh, uh, repairing with your uh, um, AMI key yet, so what they can do is they, op since it's also easy to open up, they don't have any protection mechanism, you can simply grab a blank key, you replace the uh, AMI key RF module chip in and swap to the blank keys. And that way, you are able to unlock it. Or you can, we, we during a, a reverse engineering process, we actually build a board um, to, to, to simplify the, the, the process, right? Yeah. So here, uh, I like to play a little demo here to see, to prove my point. Uh, okay, let me find the physical access. It's not coming up, okay. Right. Yeah, this is actually a blank key, right? Um, oh, we already done a uh, replacing process, so yeah, it's yeah, it's open, right? So it's simple. So this is a simple process to prove that uh, this uh, replacing RF uh, process it will work, right? All right, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, you, you know, we're gentlemen. We shouldn't do that too boo, like you know. But theft, they don't care, right? So yeah, um, since this um, physical access is really need just uh, it's really no not not much technical detail involved. It's violent. Um, let's check out some RF. Now, when I researched the RF um, module, we, we, I, I easily found uh, some news all on the internet. So basically, some theft, they actually use the device uh, called khaki jammers. They, they use it now to uh, preventing the owner to lock in your cars, right? And they actually make a lot of money from just by doing that. And they even by selling those uh, uh, key fat jammer uh, to make a fortune. So, yeah. 
Um, now here's the actual simple process how how they how they do it. So they basically they, they, the staff just wait in a car a parking lot and waiting for some uh, user can um, maybe they uh, they have something in mind and they, they forgot they, they they are in rush they they just simply press the uh, lock button and they don't bother to check if it actually locked or not um, because. Uh, Meanwhile, the the staff they sending out a, uh, a RF jamming signals, so you cannot actually unlock in, uh, lock your cars. So when the owner walk away, they can just o open your lock, uh, open open your cars and take away whatever they want. So this is a very simple process. Now, and then my question is, does Amiki smart enough to avoid this kind of yeah the tech right? So turns out. The AmiKey is actually just a one-way communication. So basically, you're sending a, uh, a signal to the yellow, yellow board through Bluetooth, and Bluetooth will send another uh, just like simple post to, to the, your green board to say, OK, let's unlock it. But you never check. There's no uh, response say you, if the actual signal has actually arrived in your car. So. Here I make another simple, simple demo just pr to prove my, my point. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you see the, the you hear the, the background noise is the uh, uh, SDR uh, is running. So I see when you when I press lock and lock you hear the signal. Beep, and then little yellow light LED turn on. That means its operation works, right? So yeah, to prove my point, they, you press button and you see the signal peaks, right? Okay. So now I just do, using the yard sticker and RF cat like a, a tool called OK tools to just basically you can use uh, send, to to send in all the jamming signals, right? So and um, yeah, as you can see, all the uh, the frequency band is already been jammed. Now let's uh, do the locking unlocking command operation again. And you can, as you can see, the LED still turn light up, um, but there's no no signal, uh, no 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 uh, uh, details regarding the jamming. So you cannot the owner. Of the Amiki cannot tell if it actually works or not, right? So basically, if uh, the, even uh, Amiki claim itself is a smart car key system, but they, they, in the, uh, it, but they really they're just like uh, any others uh, uh, original uh, old systems, right? Okay, what's next? Again, Sami is our hero, <laughs> right? So, yeah, I, I would recommend you to uh, take a look at his uh, uh, talk uh, presentation back a few years ago in DEF CON, and yeah, check out the uh, rolling code, uh, uh, roller jump uh, techniques. It's really cool. Come on, this is really bad. Yeah, but but since um, uh, the RF module on Ami keys is very different from each uh, uh, other other Ami keys. So um, f my goal here is really just uh, complete. Um, I want to com compromise the Ami keys, so I don't spend. I decide not to spend much time on it, right? But here's more we can do: key sharing analysis, right? So here's the. Uh, uh, a nice feature about regarding your key sharing. It's very simple. First, you um, you set up the time, um, the name of your, your key you want to share, um, how, how long it's going to be last. You can, or you, or you can also set up permanently, or you can set just like next maybe one day, one month, um, something like that. And once you create that, you can send. Uh, also, uh, this um, AmiKey has the limitation on only you can only create a, a share to 20 uh, uh, keys to, to basically 20 users, right? So once the the uh, name is uh, reached, you, you will not able to create anymore. So this is uh, the entire process of the, how you can share what what it actually shared with the, your 
your friends, right? So basically, you click on a key, a shared key case you created, then the AMI key will generate a, a barcode here, and also they have uh, uh, three other different ways to share with, uh, to dispute those uh, shared keys. So basically, you can send the text to, to your friend, you can just uh, copy it, copy the uh, keys and just maybe email it to him or whatever. Now, there's another some, uh, interesting feature, it's called, uh, uh, you, you can send to uh, WeChat. WeChat is, uh, aka WeChat, is uh, one of the most popular uh, IM software they, they use in China. So you can, you can send this your key through WeChat. Now, uh, also, I'm using the 2D barcode reader to, to, to just check out the lowest word code inside of 2D barcode. Um, turns out it's not like this. Now, then once you, now this is the actual the key you are share with users. So the the user when they user get this uh, keys, they can again put into the activation, uh, go through the activation process, and once they activate it, and then they go to code, right? So what could possibly go wrong? Super secure, right? Again, as I mentioned, the complete communicating process is to rely on HTTP. So really, when no, if we are doing some kind of man in the middle, mean, man in the middle sniffing, we can able easily to get your actual key, right? Now, the first thing when, in a, in a, in a background, the first thing ME key does is they send the, your very long secure encryption key, uh, 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 ME key to, one of the website, and the website will short uh, will response back a very short uh, URL for you. And when I access that URL again, it will just reveal the actual keys, right? So now this is from um, owner side. If you are sniffing in your in the car owner's web uh, uh, local network, then you will get get a key. Now, what wh what about if you you are at times up, but uh, but if it's because the lot of guys, uh, oh, I will do very quick, right? Okay, sorry about guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in the, uh, the user side layer, they, it's very uh, also simple. They send you the, the car keys, and yeah, it's also plain text, and then you can sniff in for it, right? So uh, because time stops, so I don't, don't do much demos here. So yeah. So the, the very next uh, thing is you, what you can do is can you can we cancel it, right? So if the owner find out that they want to cancel a key, right? So yeah, I have to do a very quick demo here. Just uh, come on. So yeah, see, I actually um, try to cancel it now. See, uh, the t the AMI key is cancelled. Uh, this shared key is cancelled, but still we're still able to lock and unlock the car keys. Why? Right? Maybe it's already connected. So I disconnect it again and try to reconnect. It still work. Why? Right? See, you, you turn on, turn off, no problem. Now it turns out you, you if you go back to to the. Uh, owner's phone. There's actually a message here. Is uh, what you actually say. You need to sync in order to cancel the, the shared key. You need to connect, sync your AMI key first, right? Now think about this. If you already lost your car keys, uh, cars, where where the hell you can connect into the the, the the keys, right? You cannot. So you never were able to cancel it, right? Simple. Very interesting logic here. Uh, again, right. So if we cannot cancel it, can we wait because there's timing, right? If you we, if you are not set up permanently, there is timing. So maybe we can just wait till that expired, right? Okay, we're well, gonna, gonna just very very quick, almost there, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So here again, um, I try to find out if we can bypass those timing. Share, share, sharing issues, right? So, see, as you can see here, it's to tell me that time's already expired, and, and the actual shared uh, time is actually uh, one thirty, right? In a.m. in the morning, yeah, okay, that's no problem. 
And when they, when you share to the user, you have not you don't have much function to do. You just lock and unlock. So again, oh, come on, this one. we're still able to uh, lock and unlock, right? Even the time expired. So disconnect, connect again. Still function, right? Unlock. Just um, so um, just to confirm, now time is like 1:43 already. It's way past the time, right? So again, when when time expires, you have to connect to your original car keys to in order to, to update information. This car is expired. What the hell? You cannot. So which means. Did your key key sharing uh, uh, ex, uh, expiring it will never expire, right? Your last key, here you go. Okay. Mm. Okay. I just just sniffing the uh, traffic and decryption. Right. Uh, that's the interesting part. So, but like, so yeah, where's the security encryption they're talking about? So basically, uh, when I analyzing through the uh, Wireshark. Uh, they, they, they they sent uh, some uh, listed uh, some interesting information. Um, you, you, the first step they send some um, seems like send, send some command to your key and the key will respond some random num values here, um, and then the following is is a, it's a very long, uh, it actually in total is seventy bytes of the, the some kind of I don't know encryption strings maybe. So yeah, uh, because. Yeah. Okay. So and then and then you and when I, I try to lock and unlock uh, the cars and then we we, we all, three times and I can see this uh, fixed value always gonna see uh, this fixed value. Um, the reason they send it two times is they may probably simulate the, the press and the release movement, right? So that's why they send two uh, value to your UIDs. Okay. So once we have that uh, value, actually, can we unlock it? Actually, it's not. Uh, we have actually failed with. So actually, it turns out uh, in order to to lock unlock your key, it's actually implement some kind of locking process. So yeah, so I take a look at very quickly the the, the locking process is is actually uh, lock. So we have details regarding all the pr parameters we need for logging to your system, and the yeah from the picture here we literally see the secure uh, super secure algorithm is here XOR. We see XOR operation all over the place. Now, it turns out the locking protocol is really like working like this. We fetch, uh, uh, <coughs> they fetch a, rent, uh, a value to the server and get a uh, random value keys, <laughs> they, and then they calculate it, um, yeah, and roll about, roll up to make an encryption login pocket. Now, if the, everything works fine, it will respond to the status code OA. Okay. Now, um, really, we, when they look deeper, we're able to find out it's actually. Uh, uh, it, it, to, in order to, to find out encryption code, it's really just uh, a ra random numbers uh, we got from the uh, uh, army key, and then there's uh, also another secret key uh, fixed random D word number from device initialization. But it turns out it's only one byte. So we take a look at locking pocket parameter again. Um, we, we see some interesting code. The algorithm to find out a, a one byte key code is really just a, you get a current 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 calendar the year and you minus two thousand and you you you, you get a, a, a one byte that you can, can convert to the hex code and you, once you get that you are able to get all the rest all the information to, in order to create your uh, logging packet right and then here's the code I I, uh, I wrote we, we wrote uh, to to in order to do that and yeah just prove. And however, uh, this is, uh, turns out uh, some, some surprise, but it's not going to bother too much. But because we not we not see the uh, starter code AA to in order to work, and we reverse engineer the, the, the actual firmware. But in order to find out, actually, we, we have to disassemble it. So in order to that work, we have to put all, all, everything in one piece. So okay, so now we get a, a, a code that's working. Uh, uh, so we, yeah, we can sniff in the sniff in the traffic and. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, it turns out it's it's not re really scary at all. Right, one by machine S O R. Yeah, we can sniff it. So yeah, uh, sorry, I go to very quick last time. Then we'll just prove my point. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, so here we just uh, running a simple um, script, right? And then you can from yeah, see we are able to trigger Ami key to send out a create our own uh, packet to log into the Ami key and send out the signals, right? Because we send it three times to, to, just to prove from our, our point. Okay, so let's go back again oh, very quickly. Yeah, so what's the, uh, can, we, can we report for CVEs, right? So as a, the responsible disclosure. So I actually connect, uh, connect contact to their, their uh, phone, mobile, uh, the emails, they, they have nothing replied. So, okay. So yeah, really conclusion here is uh, security by obscurity is not really gonna work. You have to test uh, your uh, product prop property before going to our market. Yeah, it's not running time, so there's no questions. So. Sorry, guys. Very fast. <laughs> Thank you.